Embracing one bag travel usually means a lot of trial and error and learning as you go. I've made my fair share of mistakes over the years, so today I'm gonna cover the top five mistakes to avoid while one bag traveling. I recently shared my ultralight one bag travel setup that was under seven pounds, and I definitely stand by that, especially as a core to build from depending on your trip. But there's definitely such a thing as packing too light. Sometimes you can get sucked up into going as light as possible and you kind of lose sight of the main point and goal of one bag travel, and that is to enhance your trip and enhance your experience. There are definitely benefits when you travel lighter and you can enjoy those while still being able to enjoy some of the luxuries you might want to bring. Everyone's going to have different needs and wants and hobbies and interests while they travel, so make sure that you're traveling light but not so light that it's going to be a hindrance to the enjoyment of your trip. On the flip side of packing too light, you wanna make sure that you're not packing too heavily as well. Just because you can fit it all into a single bag doesn't mean you should bring it. Start really evaluating those just in case items or evaluate your normal gear list over the past several trips that you've taken and see what's really been getting used and what's not been getting used. Address those pain points with items that might need to come with you, but ditch the stuff that you're not really using and that's not really bringing you any convenience or enjoyment benefits. Something that I always try and remember when I'm on the fence about bringing something is those just in case items often can be gotten pretty easily in an emergency during your travel destination. Obviously different for different places and situations, but in general, you know, if you're traveling to an established city, if something crazy happens, you can probably replace or get something that you might need in a pinch. I don't quite know what to call this tip, so I'm going to call it avoid over documenting. You know, in the age of social media, everyone's so busy and preoccupied getting their phones out to make sure that they get their Instagram photos and their Snapchats to send around to people. You know, make sure that you're putting away your phone from time to time and really being in the moment and being present during your trip. This one is another big gray area. You know, I'm a photographer. I totally understand some people like to travel just for the sole purpose of photographing the areas they're traveling to. It's not really what I'm talking about. That's what you're doing on your trip. That's what you're enjoying. But I think it's the things where, you know, you're getting boomerangs and Snapchats and all of this sort of stuff when you're not really paying attention to what's actually happening. You're too focused on getting the shot for your social media, especially in situations where you don't do social media for a living. You want to make sure that you're present and enjoying the trip. You know, definitely snap a few photos, take a few videos so you can have those memories to look back on for the years to come. But you need a lot less to enjoy those memories in the future than you probably think. People around here can probably make the obvious assumption that I enjoy planning for travel or else I wouldn't be doing all of these videos. You know, I really enjoy the planning process around trips, you know, looking in different locations, looking for areas to explore, whether outdoor or in the cities, you know, planning around for different climates to make sure I have the proper wardrobe and items with me, you know, making sure I'm trying, you know, unique and cool restaurants and bars and things like that. I really love doing all of that research before my trip and it seems like a lot of people I know in the real world don't really do a lot of that stuff. It's important to make sure that you're doing some planning before your trip to make sure that you're going to enjoy your time in that location to the fullest extent. I'm not really getting into specifics here because it depends a lot on your style of travel as to what you should be researching, but make sure, you know, check around. Reddit is a really great resource. A lot of local areas have local subreddits and um, there are tons of blogs and information out there for all these types of different places. So you can do a bit of research, you know, you get to feel a little bit like a local getting in on some less popular spots in different areas. It makes the trip that much more enjoyable and that much more stress-free too. So you're not worrying about, you know, checking around for restaurants when you're already an hour past your lunchtime and you're starving hungry, you know, and then you end up picking a stupid chain or something that wasn't very tasty. You know, do a bit of research, come up with a list of restaurants, a list of, you know, areas areas to walk around and explore, you know, check weather that time of year, all that sort of stuff. It's going to come in handy and just make your trip smoother and more fun. 
I love the process of researching the places I travel, but I'm someone that actively doesn't plan itineraries or different things to do for sure on different days, you know, booking things in advance, all of that sort of stuff. I think there's definitely an extreme that goes too far where if you plan everything out every second before you get there, you might miss out on a lot of opportunities. One, to relax and kind of go with the flow and see where the day takes you, but you might miss out on other things that you find when you get there. So do some research and look around for those different things like we talked about, but don't lock anything in, whether it be mentally or literally with tickets and things, because you might set yourself up for disappointment if you set this really big itinerary and schedule for yourself and you don't get to everything, or maybe you don't want to get to everything, or maybe you're locked into a specific day's itinerary, but you discovered this new part of town once you got there and you really want to take an extra day to explore there instead. So keep your schedule open, even if you're planning and doing some research. It's going to make for a lot more fun and unique, interesting stay wherever you're going. Before we continue, I want to take a moment to thank today's sponsor, and that is Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform. They have thousands of different classes from business to illustration to photography, videography, entrepreneurship, tons of different stuff, especially for folks in a creative field. They're always adding new classes and things on Skillshare as well. So if you haven't checked in in a while, go back and check in. Seems like every time I log on, they've got new classes for me to check out. Lately, I've been watching Dirty Design with Aaron Draplin. Um, I actually went to school for graphic design before I started doing video work, and it's always good to kind of brush up on skills, learn new things. You know, I do fortunately get to do a lot of design with the YouTube channel here, but I always love hearing from more talented and professional people, and Aaron Draplin's incredible. Check him out if you haven't yet. Skillshare Premium costs less than $10 a month with an annual membership, and the first thousand people that sign up with the link below in the description of this video will receive a free trial to Skillshare Premium premium. So check that link out down below if you haven't already. They provide a really great service and I've learned a ton over the years with watching things on Skillshare. So big thanks to them for sponsoring today's video. And this actually wraps it up for the tips. I would love to get a good discussion going down in the comments. What are some mistakes you've made in the past around one bag travel? I know a lot of us get so gung ho, you know, traveling too light, I think is going to be a common one for a lot of us. I know I've done it in the past along with everything else I've talked about here. So let me know what your mistakes are, things that you might want to avoid or recommend for other people. I'd love to get that going as a resource for everyone. Thank you all so much for watching though, and I will talk to you in the next one.